heart and you can't raise your hands because it's a bit of excitement, it's a physical act and it's an act of joyfulness and happiness unto the Lord and thanking the Lord and it's also very biblical actually. actually. So we'll start with, I am found, I am saved, I am free, I am looking up, I am smiling, I am strong, I am blessed, I am healthy, I am rejoicing, I am glad, I am made in God's image, I am a new creation, I am success, I am above, I am planted, I am beautiful, and I love life. Give yourselves a clap. You know, Jesus came to give us freedom. He found the lost sheep, so we say, I am fine. We're fine through Christ. Now, when you're in Christian circles, sometimes you'll go to church and you'll meet Christians, and they make Christianity so painful and so bad, it's like pulling out your own teeth with a pair of pliers with no anesthetic either. And that's how they picture Christianity. It's always painful, it's grief, and it's sorrows. It's nearly impossible to be happy when you get around Christians like that and actually know where they're coming from. I'm not naive, but it's not the full gospel message of the Bible. Sometimes you meet these people and sometimes they're even afraid to answer their own front doors. They're afraid to go out and meet strangers that live in fear quite often. Even if the telephone rings, oh, they're too frightened, who is it? Might be negative, might be sad news, and they even frightened to answer their own telephone. Jesus came preaching and say, good news. Good news, come on, you sleep still. Say, good news. Good news. Good news. So we're going to read it. So, Luke 8, verse 1. Soon afterward, he went on through cities and villages, proclaiming and bringing the good news of the kingdom of God, and the twelve were with him. So everywhere Jesus was going, in cities, in towns, anywhere, and around houses, he was preaching good news. And the reason I got you to quote good news is because what we're going to look at today is what did he mean what did he not mean? What did he mean by good news this morning? She's still here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So we're going to hear what is good news. Now, I've had some good news in my life. When I first walked into church, on the first service, I walked into church in Nazarene. I found uh, this beautiful girl you call Claire. Yeah, who was talking to me. And uh, I striked while the iron was hot. So I'm not as stupid as what I look. Yeah. So, so when you meet somebody, you strike and you get the woman. Uh, Claire is my good news. I've got children. That's good news to have children. It's even better news to have grandchildren. Any grannies and any any granddads in here? Who gives a wave? Way. Yeah, it's really really good news because you can give them back. But that's not my case. But still good news uh, this morning. So. Uh, Good news could be you buy your own house, which you did. It could be you buy, you know, you create a business and you make money and you employ people, which is what I've done. And the good news could be also I'm in the ministry. I went and got a degree. People believed in me, saw a gift in me, and gave me this building to preach God's word to the people, to the faithful who are here this morning. And this building is about two million pounds if you were to try and build a building like this, roughly. So the value would be about two million pound church building. Not bad for somebody who has come from the streets and has been homeless. God has blessed me with huge guys and this ministry. So uh, what is good news? So sometimes we've got to watch also as an introduction how we speak what we speak. Do we speak negatively all the time or most of the time or do we speak positively most of the time. Do you bring good news to people or do you bring bad news? How do you sound like if you were listening to yourself up here speaking or to yourself at home, to your family or friends or relatives, how would they perceive you speaking? What do you sound like? Have you ever thought of that? Have you ever thought what you look like? 
These are all gorgeous, by the way, here. All look really, really good. But have you really thought, how do you, how do you look and how do you sound to other people? So that's called awareness. We we'll have to be aware of how we look, how we sound, and, and how we want other people to be affected by us as well in life. Because as Christians, we're meant to influence people for good. So you're meant to be a, a sweet smelling offering type of thing, a, a breath of fresh air coming into the building and into your house wherever you go. Now, if we always say, right, I'll just give you a few examples. If I always say, you know what, life is really hard. Life is really tough. You know, I'm downtrodden. Uh, life is full of pain. I'm depressed. I don't think any good thing happens to me. God never gives me any good breaks. Yeah, I'm always in bad health, and I'm always, uh, you know, talking about, you know, the weather. Isn't the weather really terrible? It's really, really bad. What about politics? Whoa, whoa! Don't go there with politics at the moment. Yeah. I, I actually thought we could, I, I believe the Prime Minister, we were leaving on such a day, come what may, come what may, that to me means prison, that to me means if you're on the streets and a politician says come what may, that means bring it, it don't matter what you can do, you can burn me at the stake, yeah, in fact, I think he said something similar like that, you know, yeah, yeah, and, and did we leave? No, we didn't leave. So, so who do you want this prime minister? I'm just saying, I'm not into politics. Who are you going to vote for the guy who says, "Come what may, we will be leaving"? Is that the best we can? Is that what the country's come to? Is that the best politician out of 70 million people? Yeah, is that the best we can do? You know, say one thing, do the other. Yeah. yeah? So anyway, so that's me off my uh, box here, soapbox, because I don't know who to vote for, and I do vote, I do vote, but who do you vote for? So, so politics is actually a mess. But uh, so, so we're talking about things like that that get you really down. I'm not down. I'm not defeated, and I'm not bitter. Doesn't matter to me if he says one thing and does another. If the economy is up or low, you win some. And you lose some, it matter. You know, uh, it's probably up at the minute, yeah, somebody said. So, so, so they're always talking about trials, pressures, they're stressed out, they're worried, and they're negative. And uh, they're always sad, always sad, and they're always broken hearted. They're always in bad health, and they'll let you know about their grief and their pain straight as soon as you go for a cup of tea with them or a cup of coffee. Yeah, no, I painted a black picture. Some people are actually like that. Well, to me, if you're like that all the time, it's not good news. That to me isn't good news. So what was it Jesus was speaking about? Jesus was speaking about good news that triumphs over the curse of religion. That is one thing he was saying. Because the bad news of religion, they teach it that if you tick all the boxes, if you're really well behaved and you do everything that we say, yeah, that God will love you then. The problem with that religion is, is that when are you good? When is good good enough? Yeah. How do you know when God really loves you? Do you have to walk? Do you have to kneel on broken glass? Do you have to cry at the altar every Sunday? I know people that are very, very sad, but they'll pray at the altar every single Sunday. There'll be churches today where the same old, same old people will come up crying and they'll get the hankies out at the altar <coughs> and uh, they'll do the same thing next week. So they never feel that God loves them, that God loves them just the way they are. They never feel that God's blessing and God's favour is on their life. They're always trying to work their way to God for redemption and for salvation. And, and as an example, they'll come up and they'll do the same thing each and every week. So that's not good news. If you're doing that, it is not, it's the curse of religion. And the only time Jesus was really negative was against the religious leaders. He was actually in a, he was negative in a positive way. Hypocrites, fighters, uh, uh, whitewashed tombs, you're off your father, the devil. They were false religious leaders. Uh, you, you put all the rules on people, but you don't lift a finger to help them. You don't do it yourself. You are hypocrites. 
So he called a lot of people hypocrites. This is the curse of religion. And if you look around the world, look at any religion, most of them, <coughs> look at Islam. Yeah, Islam. They're, they say they're, they're, they're a religion of peace. Same as Christianity. Because Christianity isn't always good. And uh, Islam, but within Islam, the fight, there's sex within, just like Christianity, and the fight against themselves. The bomb other mosques for different sects of Islam, a different brand of Islam, the bomb and the massacre. And the massacre kids and children, the behavior, they'll cut your hands off you and they kill and they judge, all in the name of religion, Islam. Yeah, so, so you can same with Christianity. It is the same with Christianity. There's a lot I come from Northern Ireland. I know the, the, the curse of religion from Northern Ireland. You got the Protestants, first the Catholics. But we're all say we're Christian. We all believe in the Bible. Christians and Catholics, we all believe in the Word of God. But look at the curse it's did in Northern Ireland where we used it, it's when you use it for negativity. You use it to kill people, to bomb people, to judge people, and to fight people. Just like Northern Ireland. So I actually know a little bit about that. And the false teachers. Uh, so, uh, the truth is you cannot work your way to God. If you could, we'd all be doing it. Religion says, so, one of the sign marks of a religion will say you've got to do certain stuff. You've got to stop smoking. Have you heard that? Yeah. Well, it's not in the Bible. You know? You've got to stop taking drugs. Have you heard that one? Yeah. Well, it's not in the Bible. Mm. Uh, stop drinking. You have to stop drinking. It's a sin. It's not in the Bible, guys. Money sin. Money sin. But don't, don't stone me to death. Yeah. So, so you can't dance. Not in the Bible. Yeah. So a lot of things that we take for granted, you can't take I used to sniff glue. That's not even in the Bible. You know, you can't be a glue sniffer. I mean it's really, really bad now. I don't recommend it. But I'm just saying there's things that we add on. The rules and the regulations. And it's not bad that we add them on. The bad thing is that we teach religion. You've got to do you've got to stop doing all this stuff before God loves you. That's religion. God loves you even when you're doing all that stuff. Amen. That's the good news. Yeah, amen. Yeah. So while we were yet sinners, yeah. Christ died for us. So so where was Jesus with all the hypocrites in the church and the synagogues? No, he was out with the outcasts. Why? Because God loved them. He was out on the streets with the prostitutes, the drug addicts, the drug dealers. Uh, Although there probably wasn't, I don't know, there might have been drugs in them days and the drunkards, yeah, because he loved them. Yeah. God loved them. That's who he came for. Yeah. So he didn't call the righteous, he came for the people, the sick, unrighteous people, just like I was, and just like, I dare say, all of us here, I hope. And he comes for those who need salvation yeah. and need redemption. God loves you. Yeah. God loves every single person. That is the good news. The good news is that, right, David, yeah, isn't valued more than me in God's eyes. In God's eyes, I am not valued more than David. Yeah, that's true. We're all equal in God's eyes, and that's the good news. And he loves us all the same. So what is the bad news? More bad news would be uh, if you just quoted half the message of the Bible, I could quote half a message of the Bible, half of the gospel. Gospel means good news. So when we get the translation here, good news of the gospel, you could say good news of the good news. Good news of the good news. So I could teach you, I could preach half a gospel. This is the problem. Here's half the gospel. Yeah? Your own righteousness is as filthy rags. Your own righteousness, filthy rags. That's half the gospel. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. These are in Romans. Yeah. So that's still only half the gospel, because that's telling you your own righteousness is filthy rags, and the wages of sin is death. Now, if I was to stop there, you would feel uh, you would feel guilty. 
you would feel condemned and you would go out of the church feeling, well, you know, everything I do is filthy and I'm like rags here and God doesn't love me. That's only half of the gospel. That would be bad news. Say bad news. Bad news. That's bad news. That's bad, really bad news if you stop there. So Jesus talked about the enemy coming and the enemy wants to blind you. He wants you to just stop there. He wants to blind you and he doesn't want you to know that you've got God's favour upon your life. That God wants to bless you and God has a really good plan to go with the good news that he's put He don't want you to know that. And uh, so this is what happens in church. And, and religious people want to quote the Bible, the Old Testament. You'll hear them quote the Ecclesiastes. There's nothing good under the sun. Woe is me, all is evil. Right? And, and they'll quote right up, right up to Jesus. Happy are these who mourn. you got to mourn if you want to be happy. Yeah. So they'll quote Jesus saying, blessed are them who are mourn mournful. You'll, have heard, you'll hear that. It's not the full gospel. The gospel is a message that goes from the start in Genesis where it talks about dominion and, and create and be blessed in creation to the, the Satan coming and robbing you. And then throughout the Bible, there is prophets in the Old Testament that have the joy of the Lord. There's Daniel who was taken into Babylon and he got the favour of God upon his life even though he was in Babylon in captivity. He rejoiced, he prayed. Come what may, may God. Just say, Come what may, the king's decree. He was on his knees praying to God. And, and the king threw him, society threw him into a den of, of uh, lions. Thank you. Lions, you still here? Yeah. Yeah, lions. And Daniel didn't succumb and say, well, they'll put me. You know, Daniel was true. He, he was a man of integrity. Oh, to get a politician of integrity. That would be amazing. That would be absolutely one. That would be a miracle. If you don't believe in miracles, don't put your axe next to anyone. Because when you put your axe down, you're asking God for a miracle. Because most of them, maybe not all, but most of them, don't say what, what don't, 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 don't mean what they say. But Daniel did mean what he said. He went to the lands and God looked after him. And, and I would say that if a politician went to prison, for what he believed in, he'd be the next Prime Minister. Because we'd all say, well, well at least he, he, he was a, a man of conviction. He believed what he said. That's the guy I want. And there'd be, they'd be all up in arms if he had it done that. I really believe that. Because we're all looking for a leader who means what they say in life. Joseph was also like that in the Old Testament. And uh, even though bad things happened to Joseph, he didn't get negative, he didn't get all depressed, he didn't become a victim, he praised God, and he realized that what the enemy meant for harm, God can use for good. So when he went into Potiphar's house and he was accused, and when he was in prison, he still helped people. And God promoted him to the second to Pharaoh in Egypt. And he actually rescued God's people, as we know, and, uh, and, and the Egyptians. And the Egyptians could not hold on to the, to the holy people of God. Just like today with Satan. Satan can't hold you. And, and that's where you can become blind and deaf. If you believe, if you believe and you're here and Satan can conquer you, Satan cannot conquer you. Satan cannot put a foothold into your life Amen. if you don't allow him. Because you got the armor of God. And so... So up until the crucifix, in fact, up until Pentecost, people did live in fear, even the disciples, and they were negative. Even the disciples were negative. But here's the story of God. After Pentecost, after the Holy Spirit empowers the people in the upper room, they went out the next day, and they looked like they were drunk. They were so happy, they were dancing. People were saying, hey, it's not the hour to go and get drunk. It's early in the morning. So, so being a Christian, the power gives you the joy, the new life, new creation. Christ lives in you. He fills you with the power of the Holy Spirit in your life. You can rejoice. So, so, so that doesn't mean all circumstances are going to be good. Listen to me, it doesn't mean that. The Apostle Paul had all sorts of stuff happen to the Apostle Paul. He was thrown in dungeon. He was thrown with shackles. He was, he, had the, he was in the deepest dungeon of a prison. There was rats 
There was cockroaches. And Apostle Paul and Silas praised the Lord with joy in their heart. The Apostle Paul says in Philippines, rejoice. And again, I say, rejoice. rejoice. That's the Christian church. Amen. That's the message of the gospel. That is the message. The message is, with Christ living in you, you are a new creation. You are victorious. The old is gone. The negativity is gone. Because God lives in you. He's blessed in your life. He's got his favour. We, we are the seed of Abraham. The Abrahamic blessing is on you. It's on you. We are the children, the holiness of God. Not through what we do. This is why I like the church of Nazarene. Not because of what we do, but because of what Christ has done on Calvary's cross. Amen. So, so, do you know why I don't need to sit and be a saddle? Say, no saddles allowed. No saddles no allowed. Here's, here's what I mean by that. Jesus on the cross in the 53rd, uh, in Isaiah 53, he took our sins and our, our sorrow. He bore them his very own. He bore them. So Jesus takes our sins and our sorrows. He also takes our brokenness. He takes our lives and he makes them complete on Calvary's cross. The good, that's the good news. So, so in church, there shouldn't be any sad Christians that can come in sad. They can be sad for a while, but you'll get it. When you get the Holy Spirit's power in your life, you are victorious. Amen. You are rejoicing, and again I say rejoice. The joy of the Lord is your strength. So in the Old Testament, there are people who are joyful. They're happy. Happy. It says happy are the people whose God is the Lord in the Old Testament. Happiness. Happiness. Joyful and gladness of heart is, is, is our birthright. So you are blind. You are blind to the fact that you don't realize what's in you. The treasure of God is in your life. Now how blind are you if you don't realize God loves you? You put his treasure in David, same as me, if you're not using it. That's the problem. It's not that Christians aren't Christian. It's just that they come from a different angle and they don't read. Hold on a minute. If we're all meant to be saddles, what happened then? Then the Bible contradicts itself because the Apostle Paul should have been really sad. But he was happy. He was glad. He was rejoicing. Well, they don't quote that. They don't quote that Jesus was at the saddle. Jesus was happy. He was an overcomer. He had the power of God on his life. He rejoiced. He had the joy when he went into Jerusalem. The Bible says, oh, if I could gather to you up, like a hen gathers his chicks up. He was joyful at the thoughts of going for the cross. Uh, and you can go on and on. So the full story of God is you've got to read all the Bible. Not just the bit of the Bible. You've got to read it all. And the epistles and the gospel is that the good news is that there is an abundant life for everyone here. Abundant life of joy and of freedom. And that's why this church is going to be a bit different. We're going to rock the boat in Christianity around Morley and maybe around Leeds as well because this would be what I would call my favourite teaching. It helped me. It's believing in what God has put in there, the treasure. And your cup is overflowing. Are you half, half, is it, is it half full or half empty? No, it's overflowing. Amen. Yeah. So when I ask you, I say, my cup overflows. His staff and his rod comforts me. Amen. The peace of God is perfect peace. God gives you perfect peace in your life. He says, don't worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow has enough worries of itself and curse. Cast your burdens <coughs> upon me, for my yoke is easy and light. How, how, how many times does he have to say it in the Bible? Where did we go wrong? I'll tell you where we went wrong. So why aren't we all with Mexican waving in every church and rejoicing? I'll tell you where we went wrong. We listen to the curse of religion. Religion will keep you down because they want to have control over you. People want to control you. Even in churches, even in some really good Christian churches, still Christian, but they won't let you up and talk. They won't let you up to witness. They won't let you up to give your testimony. You've got to go through the, the, the hurdles. You've got to tick all the boxes before they let you up front. You have to meet their criteria. So you have to be on probation. When you go to churches, you're on probation for three years. 
Because you don't get up here. You don't touch the word of God until you're three years in this church. We don't baptize you until you go through all the courses. Eh? Have you ever seen churches like that? Yeah. You have to go through the courses. I baptize anyone. Because that's not biblical. Right away, as soon as people desire to be baptized and, and they had the evidence that they give their hearts to God, you get baptized. Amen. You get baptized straight away. They were Amen. baptized and God filled them with the Holy Spirit Amen. and baptized them with the Holy Spirit as, as evidence that they have received the Holy Spirit of God in their lives that empowers them, that frees them up. You start talking different. When you got the Spirit of God, I look totally different now than when I was a criminal, than when I was in prison, not on board, than when I was on the streets, than the first day I walked into church. You see, that's God's favor on your life. Uh, so I'm not saying everyone is going to have mega wealth. I'm not saying that. I'm better than what it was. I'm more richer now. I've got money in the bank that I didn't have then. My health is brilliant. I don't wonder what the doctor said. I mean, if you ask my doctor, my doctor would say, that guy's going to die any minute. Mm -hmm. That guy should not be up there. High blood pressure, SD, heart problem, uh, where my heart doesn't like, get the full oxygen in it, when it in between the beats. Yeah, so I've got that. Got that. I'm on the verge of diabetes. See? Right? So what? I feel absolutely brilliant. So, so if I listen to the doctor, right, you didn't know the a lot of you probably didn't know that about me. But I've got to give them a testimony to God's grace and God's mercy in my life. <clears throat> yeah. So, uh, so, so we've got a grandson. How's that going to affect my health? Well, might even be getting the new baby. Might be coming to us as well. We might have to bring up the new baby. So we'll have a real baby Jesus. Let's look in the positive side for Christmas. We'll have a real baby Jesus. Yeah, praise the Lord. At 56 years of age. And I've got a new baby. Wow! I'm so blessed and so happy. Oh, and uh, and uh, God's going to make the baby sleep all night through. Didn't yeah, tell you that, but yeah, so I get to sleep as well. Yeah. So, so it's how you look on life. How do you look on life? Yeah. If you look on life, that 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 I'm saved. Christ lives in me. God has a plan for my life. All I have to do is aim. Aim for happiness, aim for joy. I don't always do it, but our aim and our target is that our joy is inside. The treasure of the Lord is inside our hearts, not in circumstances out here. The enemy and religion will tell you they don't like you. That church, you've not done probation in that church, you've got to do another three years before you get up here. I will never teach that. You get up here next week if you want. I don't teach it because it's not the Bible. It's religion. Yeah. And thank God the church in Nazarene never did that with me. They let me up straight away. And I did make a mess of things as well. But that's okay. That's okay. You can make a mess and be up here. God still loves you. And we still love you. That's a family. And that's church. It doesn't mean, uh, you know, you have to just come up and be yourself. We'll try to help you. But we'll still love you if you mess up up here. That's good news. So it's all about the good news here. Uh, you excited? Yeah. I've went way off my notes here, by the way. Way, 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 off. way, way off. So I said to Claire, I want to sing, I stand amazed in the presence. We sung that when we first came into church here. And one of the, here's the, one of them, it's a happy, joyful song. A lot of, we're doing a lot of traditional ones and they're happy and they're joyful, the ones we're picking. So not everyone was sad as Christians. You think to hear some people were all sados. We're not sados. We're not losers in life. We're winners and victorious. So one of the line within, I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus of Nazarene. It says, He took our sins and our sorrows, and He made them His very own. He had no tears. Don't tell me Jesus was a weeping Jesus, and He had tears. And, and he wept. There's one verse that says Jesus wept. But didn't tell you why he wept. And that's when he came to his friends Lazarus. And he heard that Lazarus had died in the tomb. It says Jesus wept. Well he might have wept with gladness. He might have wept, wept with happiness. Have you ever been so happy that you actually cried tears? Yeah. 
and I'll tell you what my version on that is. You're not hear this in any church in the world. It's just my version. Yeah, my version is Jesus knew he was going to resurrect him. Yeah. Jesus knew that he had eternal life Amen. in him. So why would Jesus weep with sorrow? He took our sorrows. He was weeping with joy. Compassion. Put that in your pipe and smoke Amen. it for some Christians. Yeah, but compassion. He was laughing because he knew the enemy, enemy, the devil was defeated and the devil wasn't going to keep Lazarus in the tomb. Amen. Now, if I had that power yeah. and that knowledge, I would be laughing. Yeah. I would be laughing at them. And sometimes in churches, when you get the full joy and the happiness and the joy of the Lord, you'll be laughing at people. You'll be going, if they only knew. Yeah. If they only knew who I am. Who I am. And Jesus must have been... Sometimes maybe Jesus was just human and he just laughs at people. And he just thought, oh, you have a lot to learn. Like laughing in a good way. Mm -hmm. Happy. You know, I'm going to raise people from the tomb. Lazarus isn't dead. He's only sleeping. Mm -hmm. The little girl isn't dead. Only sleeping. See, when you know what God knows and you know what Jesus knows and you know and you believe in miracles, yeah. it's like they're only sleeping. Well, they're as dead as oak. He's dead four days. He stinks. Yeah, he's only sleeping. As far as I'm concerned, my faith, Lazarus is asleep. Come forth, Lazarus. And Lazarus comes forth. Get up out of that dead bed. And the dead are raised to life. People were taking a casket down the road. A widow, her only son. And Jesus went over and, and he leaned on it and tapped it, you know. And, and, and the boy comes alive. And he raises a boy from the casket. How awesome. Now that power is in you. Now, we don't release it the same Jesus did. I know that. right? But our target should be, the aim should be the same as Jesus. What would Jesus do? Yeah. Who are you? What's your identity? My identity now isn't spiritually George McMullen. That used to be me. My identity is Jesus. Christ lives in me. So we are all Jesus. Spiritually speaking, not weird. We're, we're all Jesus. And when you start to realize that you've got the authority to stop Satan, to dance on this on the vipers, who's the vipers? Well, Jesus said the snakes, he called he called the religious leaders vipers. What's a viper? It's a snake. You shall dance, you shall tread on them. So you should have your boots, your boots. Yeah, and you should be able to tread on, on, on scorpions and on vipers, religious people. Because religion will kill you. And it will keep you down. And it will keep you sad. But when you come into the fullness of joy and salvation and redemption, that it was done for us on the cross. Jesus died on the cross for us completely and said, it is finished. Amen. It's finished. Then... We show our good works then in appreciation. Christ did me. Of course I'm going, to, I'm, I'm going to help the homeless. Of course I'm going to give water to the thirsty. Of course I'm going to buy buns next Sunday. Because I'll go to missions and I'll help you. Of course. You know. You can take my clothes if you need them. You can take my new car. Because it's not my clothes anyway. But you take my new car. You take my car. You see. When you know. When you know that stuff. The good news. Material things really, really want to put. People have lost their houses in a flood recently. Yeah. They're all sad, aren't they? And then you say, you know, Paul, I've got empathy. Em what's the word? Empathy. <laughs> empathy. I've got empathy for them. Yeah, I'm human. I say, yeah. I say, there go I, but for the grace of God. Yeah, because we can all end up like that. Mm -hmm. However, we have the capacity within us to rejoice. It's only a house. Jesus could come tonight. Yeah. Jesus could come tomorrow. Amen. Do not worry about your houses. Yeah. You know, here's a sign of the early. Here's how I know that religion hates what I'm saying. Religion hates it. Really hates it and will hate you. And they'll try to put water on the fire of God that's in your heart and keep you down. The early Christians had to live in catacombs under Nero and in Rome. They were brought into the Colosseums and that they were persecuted. They, they had all sorts of external things happen to them. Lions, they were eaten by lions. They were burnt, they were tarred, they were set alight. 
And you know all the stories, if you read the church history, these Christians, I'm talking about proper Christians now, not religious ones, because they all became institutionalized with a state. I'm talking about the Christians that said, well, we're not gonna, you know, we're not gonna touch the unclean thing. The state was unclean. It was all corruption. There was paganism that was getting mixed and still is with Christianity. I'm not gonna go there because it's coming up to Christmas. So I'm not gonna say anything about that, so we use Christmas. Yeah, but, but they were celebrating Christmas well before. Uh, they only started celebrating it in about the sixth century in church history. I love church history. And you start to learn all these things. So we Christianize the pagans. Yeah. So, but in the early church, there was Christians who walked with Jesus, who were relations with Jesus, who were second generation, third generation Christians, and they would not bow the knee to Nero and to Rome. And they were persecuted in, in, in the catacombs of Rome, and they were thrown to the lions, burned alive. And uh, But here's the thing in history, they were singing. And they weren't singing negative, woe is me, they were singing happy songs. Yeah. They were in the Colosseums, the amphitheaters, and they were singing happy. They were rejoicing in Mexico, waving, whoa, a lion, whoa, let's do it, right? We're going to try this, actually, I, 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 I'm on a roll here. I want you all the Mexican wave from this end to that end. I'm going to shout, there's a lion, right, right, right? There's a real lion going to eat you, right? There's a lion, there's a lion, hey! Yeah, there's a lion. That's what they were like. And the problem was, it wasn't sport and it wasn't entertaining. So what, what, the, what the Romans did and said was the people were taking the side of the Christians. And they were going, well, why? it's not sport, it's not entertaining. They're rejoicing, they're happy. We want to see people screaming. We want to see people worrying and, uh, and sport running away. Christians were going, come on, lion, come on. And that's why the apostle says, the devil goes about roaring like a lion, seeking who he may be for. Yeah. But greater, he says, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Amen. Greater is he that is in you. Don't be frightened. You are victorious. So that's how you know that the Christians can have this happiness and joy inside them, in spite of sometimes the circumstances. We are not dictated by circumstances and situations in life. Our religious people, we broke that. You know, in this church there was some religious people. Break it out. We broke it. Yeah. In some other churches, religion creeps in. Our job is to let your light shine. Got to let your light shine, and you've got to be different, because the Bible says you are strangers and pilgrims here on earth. The Bible, Jesus came preaching the kingdom of God. He said, it's in you and it's all around you, the kingdom of God. So what we're saying is, is God puts his power in your life after Pentecost. You get the power. And you know what? Heaven can be on earth. It can be on earth because it's not circumstances. Once you get, it's not circumstances. It's, it's something that God gives you a new heart, new flesh, new love in your life you can conquer almost anything in life when you have this love new creation and you know who you are in christ you can you can be happy when everyone else is saying hey don't you care we're sinking here jesus had his head asleep on the boat because he trusted we're going to go to the other side yeah. so the waves ain't going to kill you and he conquered the waves and he conquered fear you can only have two things. You can either live in love or you can live in fear. They're your options. Don't mix them. So live in love. If you're a true Christian in here, we'll see revival here in this church. We will see every seat filled, literally. A manifestation will open the doors and a lot of people will come in when enough of us start to get it. Start to get burned with fire of the Holy Spirit. Amen. With joy and with his happiness. Be baptized with happiness, because happiness is your birthright. It's, it's not a sin to be happy. You know, you'll, hear, you'll hear religious people say that. You should not be happy. Sister Mary over here is really, really sad. Yeah, we, we empathize with Sister Mary, but it doesn't keep us from being happy. So, so in religion, 
And, and that's man-made because it shows them up. But if you're a true Christian, nothing shall separate you from the love of Christ in your heart. And, 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 and uh, nothing shall come against you. Nothing can come against you to put out the fire and the love, the joy and the happiness. No matter what happens out there, our circumstances, nothing should rob you of the joy of the Lord in your heart. Well, I've said enough. Amen. Amen. Give God a big clap. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Now we're going to go out. We're going to have tea and coffee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tea and coffee. We're going to eat buns, buns, buns. Somebody's birthday. We're going to sing happy birthday. So be blessed. Father, bless everyone here. Uh, help them to realize that when things do get tough outside, that the tough get going inside. Lord, bless them, we pray. Empower them. Let them realize that, the, that you've already defeated the enemy. We are more than conquerors. And that your joy and your love, your happiness, we can sing in our hearts. Our hearts ring with a melody. Lord God, every day your mercies are new. And we thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father God. In Jesus' name, bless us all. Keep us safe. And we just thank you for the good news of the gospel because it is really, truly good news. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. And then do like Jesus do. Spread the good news every town, every village, every city. Good news of the gospel. Amen.